Hello there. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create this um, Pappus curved ring with this heart gem placed into it. So it's this object here, the one on the left that we're going to create. Um, the object on the right, um, this heart shaped gem is actually just duplicated on either side of an emerald gem. So once you've created this first object here, this first ring on the left, the second one's quite easy to actually create. Now we're going to do it in Fluid Designer for 3D printing. So um, if I go to Fluid Designer for 3D printing, so this is more or less what we're going to uh, recreate. So um, this object at the top here is actually a Pappus curve, which we can uh, add from the menu here. Uh, and this is just a, a, a default ring, um, which is available free with Fluid Designer for 3D printing. And it's got a cross section, so it's got a thickness of one millimeters by five millimeters deep there. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So uh, if I just go to uh, new, um, so in the rings folder, we want the default all UK ring sizes object. We just drag and drop that onto the workspace. And the default size for that is one millimeter by five millimeters. So one millimeter thick and five millimeters deep. And um, the internal diameter of this is 15.09 millimeters. But we could set it to any kind of UK size there. I'm just going to stick with the default one though for this uh, particular exercise. So if I just view that from the top now, I'm just going to switch on screencast keys. So any key presses I make should be displayed down here. And I'm going to open up the toolbox panel and just open up this operator panel here. And uh, what I'm going to do is going to go to add curve and we're going to use a Pappus curve. Now, when we look down on this uh, Pappus curve here, you can't see any heart shape at the moment. And uh, what we need to do is to change some of the parameters in the panel over here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to set this value down to 30. That changes the number of control points. If we go into edit mode, there would have been 180 control points when this resolution is 180. Now there are only 30. That's a lot easier to manage. And you'll see that when we go into edit mode later. Um, I'm going to increase the scale here. Um, I like to sort of make it so that it's more or less the inside diameter of the um, ring itself. And uh, I could change the height, but I can do that in different ways later. Now, if I um, change this value to three and then to four, I'm viewing it from the top. It's looking really weird there. Um, but sometimes what you've got to do with these curves is you've got to change this round value down to 1. You don't want it repeating itself four times. So when I take that back down to 1, things look a little bit more sensible. And if you look carefully here, we've more or less got a heart shape here. And what you've got to do with these curves here is play around with the P and the Q values until you get a gem shape that you want to use. So I've more or less got a heart shape there. So what am I going to do now? Well, I've pretty much finished with this panel over here, so I can close that down. And um, what I need to do is I need to rotate this about the X axis 90 degrees. So if I do R, X and 90, and then just pull it up, because um, that's where, where, where the gem setting is going to go. <coughs> now, the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, thicken up the top of the ring here so that uh, my gem setting will actually fit on it as it's shown here. Um, so we do that by just going to view and top view again. And we need to go into edit mode now. And I want to just select the one control point at the top. And I need to change the radius. And as I increase the radius, you can see the ring moves out there. So if I just go to view and back view, I can adjust this. Yeah, 3.4 is the setting that I used before. Oh, actually, I used less than 3.4. I think I think I probably used about 2.6. So let me let me bring that back in a bit. Okay. Now, as you can see, the uh, Pappus is just sitting outside it at the moment, um, but that's not a problem. If I just go to view and back view again and select the Pappus. If I press S on the keyboard and scale it and bring the Pappus curve in so that it fits inside the uh, ring area there, 
and then click the mouse button. What I must do now is do Control A and apply the scale. And as I do this, notice the thickness of the Pappus curve changes. If you don't apply the scale, any settings that you make over here will not apply properly. So you must do that. Now I want to change this to 1 mm by 2 mm. At the moment the cross section of this is rounded and it's uh, a millimeter. I want it rectangular like that um, to give it some body, to give it some thickness. Um, so what do I want to do next? Well let's have a look. Let me go to view and top view. Um, well I want to squash this bottom up a little bit at the moment. I don't want that sticking down there. I want this bottom bit fitting a little bit more inside. So if I press the tab key and go into edit mode, now here are the 30 control points that I set in the toolbox panel over here instead of 180. And uh, if I just do B on the keyboard for box select, and if I just draw around those objects at the bottom there, um, I can just drag them up. And uh, release them when I'm sort of happy with the position. Yeah, I think that's okay and uh, come come back out of that again and so I'm going to drag this down now until it overlaps with my ring because obviously ultimately this has got to be one solid object okay so I've got the bottom part of this okay now I now need to sort out the top part okay so um, what am I going to do here well if I go to view and uh, back view um, I want to tidy this up so that I can fit a heart gem in there. Well, I think the first thing I'm going to do actually is to uh, append a heart gem. So um, on my system, I've got some gem settings with um, with prongs. So uh, I'm going to look for a heart gem setting here, and I'm going to append that into this particular document. So if I go to File and Append. Go up through the menu system in Fluid Designer until you get to the Groups folder. And I want Gem Settings Prongs. Now there's a couple of different ones for um, hearts. I'm going to use the one here that says um, Three Prong Heart. And I always want to append the object. So I want the Heart Gem. And I'm just going to select the um, two inner claws. I'm not going to use lots and lots of claws. I'm just going to use the inner ones and I want a heart gem as well. So when I just append them from the library you can see that they sit like that. So we've got the heart gem there which is clearly too big at the moment um, and we've got the prongs which we can uh, adjust uh, in a minute. So let's just go to view and back view again and let's click on the heart gem now we need to scale this down, so it's S on the keyboard for scale, and when I scale it watch at the top here what the scale factor is. So S at the moment it's uh, it's actually the default size which is always a 10 millimeter gem. 0.9 at the top there in the scale means it's 9 millimeter gem, 8, 7. So let's let's stick with a 7 millimeter gem and we'll try and work to that size. Now it's not important to apply the scale with an object like this because we're not going to print it, but I've got a kind of habit of always doing that. Um, so there's our gem. Um, now we clearly need to rotate it a little bit, so if I look at it from the left, I need to rotate this about the x-axis, so if I go over here and uh, just rotate it, so we want this line in line with the um, top of the gem set in there. And then we just need to sort of reposition this. To about there. Okay, now we can switch the snap off and play around. So I need to go to view and back view. So if I switch the snap off there. And I want to put the gem more or less in the middle of that. Now what I need to do is to uh, modify this um, cage here, the, the, the gem support cage there. And we can do that by um, going into edit mode. So it's the tab key on the keyboard. Now, 
what do we need to adjust here well first of all what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to delete those two control points there in fact I'm actually going to delete these two as well so I'm going to take out this whole section here hopefully um, so if I press X on the keyboard and delete those vertices you can see if I just hide the heart gem I've actually taken out that uh, that bit there that was uh, as you can see down at the bottom now as I look down here you can see we've got this black bit that means something's a bit strange going on down there so I'm actually going to delete some of those as well so I'm highlighting those holding down the shift key and if I press X on the keyboard and delete those you can see I've done the same thing on the bottom part of this object now if I select if I just zoom in and if I select those two points again and if I do W and subdivide I'll create a point between them and if I just go to uh, view and back view again and if I just move that one control point down you can see that I can create a heart shape again so I've just created a heart shape at the bottom and that's what I want to do at the top here now so take those two control points do W on the keyboard for the specials menu and subdivide the control points uh, and then select the control point in the middle and make sure you go to view and back view and just move the um, blue arrow up now um, as I'm doing that you probably notice that there is a circle here and that's the proportional editing circle now I'm going to actually switch that off and we do that by pressing O on the keyboard so if I switch that off it's actually not uh, not doing such a good job of creating my heart shape so let me just do Control and Z let me do O on the keyboard again to switch proportional editing on and this time I'm going to move the proportional editing circle and uh, I'm looking for a heart shape here and I'm not really getting it am I okay I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that at the moment and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the control points around here And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this tilt and I'm going to try and fold the top of this object inwards and hopefully get my heart shape. Now I'm going the wrong way there. Can you see what I'm doing as I change this mean tilt? That's working better I think. So I think if I set that at about 90, it doesn't have to be exactly 90 but I've just typed it in that will allow my gem to sit much better than it was doing before so it's the mean tilt that I've changed there but I've just highlighted the control points around the top part of the object so I'll press A on the keyboard to deselect that and if I just go to view and back view again let me just see if I can get this heart shape a little bit better I'm just going to try and move that again yeah that's that's looking a lot better now I think that's looking more like the heart so if we put our heart shape back in there yeah, I think I think that's looking a bit better so um, I can pull it back a little bit okay now what I want to do is to actually go around this object pulling these in so if I just select that control point and pull that in a bit there and pull that in and down a bit and I'm working on the basis of these blue lines here so if I just pull this one across and pull this one across and I'll just come out of edit mode and I'll just select my gem there and uh, just pull it up and see how it fits so I just need to play around here just tidying up this heart shape um, so I need to sort it out at the top I think now so uh, press the uh, tab key to go into edit mode and if I just select those two control points and just pull those in slightly 
and again perhaps pull this one in here um, I think that one at that side's okay now as you can see you can probably play around with this for quite a long time until you get it exactly how you want it but essentially you've got to look in there and you've got to judge that the heart is going to fit well and uh, perhaps I need to just rotate the angle a little bit more um, yeah that's that's looking a lot better okay so it is, it is about using your eye and making sure that you're happy that that gem is going to fit in there and not actually fall right through it um, so if you want to pull them in a little bit more um, you can do so so view from the back again tab key uh, I can highlight those two just bring those down a bit more uh, bring that in a bit more bring that in a bit more bring that in and just adjust that as well okay so you need to play around with that until you get the shape that uh, that you need for a for a heart gem to fit in now the only thing we need to do now is to um, adjust these prongs so uh, tab key on the keyboard and uh, highlight the top and bottom of the prong and uh, I just need to move those across and position them um, now I think the tilt here is probably not quite right so if I just change the tilt until it's looking uh, okay there now it's changing the tilt for this other one this is a, a mirror copy of this one okay but uh, we now need to change the height of this so um, I need to pull that up now if you if you're not happy about this being open at this side you could use the prongs um, to join the top of the uh, gem support to the bottom okay so you could position the uh, prongs like that and then uh, whoops I've got hold of the wrong one there careful I want uh, the uh, I want to move it in the Y I'm just going to press G on the keyboard to position it now Okay, so you need to position these prongs until you've got um, probably about three or four millimeters there so I'll just measure that that's two and a half millimeters probably just a little bit more so that your uh, gem setter can bend the prong over uh, and it fits okay um, so let's just view that from the back again I think I need to just tilt it again probably 20 degrees is probably all right over here oh no not two degrees 20 degrees I want and uh, perhaps just move it in there and just move it out at the back okay so yeah I think uh, I think that one's probably okay again you can faff about with this now press the tab key to come out of edit mode now we need to do the same for the top for this one here this one looks like it'd be a lot easier so I can just position it there and um, press the tab key to go into edit mode um, view it from the left perhaps or from the right um, we've got two millimeters there so if we just extend it a couple of millimeters Um, that will be plenty to bend over and then trim back later and uh, perhaps just bring it down a little bit there so that it is overlapping with the cage at the top okay so in this particular one I've, I've actually done those prongs slightly different from the original one here I didn't put any prongs going right down to the bottom of the cage I just put the three prongs at the very top I could do that quite easily here by just moving that one right up 
and, and, and fitting it there. Okay, so you can you can decide for yourself how you want to actually uh, fit it. But uh, it does clearly need to uh, interact with the cage here. And you do need a bit of clearance at the top so that the actual gem will fit in. Okay, so that's a bit more like it was um, in the original one that I did, but obviously with all three of them. Okay, so once you're happy with that, um, you can actually delete the heart, and then you can convert everything else to a mesh. Um, so the Pappus curve, convert it to a mesh. and uh, convert the uh, claws to a mesh and uh, just then hold down the shift key and highlight all the objects and just join them all together so we've got one uh, object there and then it's a case of export it i like to use um, obj so it's a pappus heart ring so you export that as an OBJ file. Then as is normal with Fluid Designer for 3D printing, always go to Netfab Basic and um, open up the uh, OBJ file or SDL file if you decide to use that format. And because we were using parametric smart objects, um, I'm pretty confident that Netfab will actually fix this. So if we just click on Update, automatic repair and execute and um, click on update so everything's being set back to zero so you just apply the repair remove the old part uh, and then just uh, go to part and export it uh, and I'll just save it as Pappas Harbury now we've got a manifold edge problems but just click optimize and once we get the green tick, that's it. And so there's your file ready to upload to Shapeways um, or to send to your slicer. So that's how you can manipulate a Pappas curve to give you a heart gem shape fitting there. Um, whether or not uh, you include these prongs all the way down to the bottom, personally I wouldn't. I would just have the prongs at the top. Okay, so that's how you do it. Good luck.